Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on with my tutorial series on complex analysis. This is video number 6 and I'm going to discuss the Cauchy Integral Theorem. As usual I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. Here have all my videos archived and listed and I have a few other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. I'd like to remind you of the previous videos which are relevant. We are discussing complex analysis and therefore the videos on complex numbers are important. In the series on complex analysis I discussed the cauchy riemann equations, Green's theorem, the divergence theorem and the relationship between Green's theorem and the divergence theorem. Unfortunately the five videos previous to this in the series on complex analysis don't actually prepare us in order to discuss the Cauchy theorem and the Cauchy formula and therefore they don't allow us to get to the real meat of the series on complex analysis. Therefore I present a derivation of the necessary background in complex analysis in order for you the viewer to discuss the real meat. And the meat I define is the Lorentz series, the residue theorem and the evaluation of the Planck integral. The evaluation of the Planck integral is in actual fact the purpose of the series on complex analysis. So we are presently discussing the Cauchy integral theorem. So let's begin the necessary background in order for us to derive the theorem. Our first port of call are complex line integrals. When we move from the real axis to the complex plane, we denote all points as z. This is the complex number z and it's x the real component plus i times y the imaginary component. For example, if I said z is twice cosine t plus twice i sine t, I would say that 2 cosine t is the x component or the real component and twice sine t is the imaginary component or the y component. Ignore for the moment that I'm using t, I'll explain that. Unfortunately, not all equations can be written very easily or very usefully as let's say a function y a function of x or x a function of uh, y in two dimensions. For example, let's take the probably the most simple equation you'll see in your studies, the equation of a circle, r squared is x squared plus y squared. Now in order for us to even plot this, we need to rewrite this in four different manners or four different ways. Here, 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 and here. And that's it. That's not very useful. In actual fact, it's quite problematic. And it motivates us to introduce something else called a parameter. So it's useful to parameterize a curve using the parameterization variable. And we introduce a new variable, a third variable from x and y, and we call it t. And therefore, instead of writing z as a function of x and y, we write z as a function of t, x as a function of t, and y as a function of t. t, of course, is a real parameter as opposed to an imaginary parameter. Now, doing this, rewriting z, x, and y in, in terms of the parameterization variable t is actually not particularly easy. It's known as parameterizing your curve. Of course, mathematicians have analyzed the most useful or most common curves, and you can look those up in the book. So it's very easy, for example, to get the parameterization of a circle or an ellipse or whatever. But if you were to be presented with an arbitrary curve, it would be quite a tedious task for you to usefully parameterize your curve. So to deal with difficult functions, we introduce the parametric equation where we write x and y in terms of a third variable t. This is the parameterization variable. So we write x as a function of t, y as a function of t, and z, which is a function of x and y, now also becomes a function of t. This will give us the parametric curve. The parametric equation will give us the parametric curve. For example, let's say we wrote x as t squared plus t, y is twice t minus 1, where t went between minus 1 and 1. 
you'd get the curve here in pink. It would be quite a challenge for us to represent this just in terms of x and y. Now something I don't want to dwell on, but a parametric curve has a direction. It goes from low, low t to high t. In other words, it goes in the direction of increasing t. So in this case, it would be, that would be the direction of positive. 